I mentioned the Ace Bailey, Dylan Harper, um, you know, additions to Rutgers. Uh, and I- I'm kind of curious just from a big picture perspective. It's not often that we see, I, I can't recall a time where Rutgers has had this much hype going into a basketball season. Uh, there, these, these two guys are, depending on where you look, projected to be top five picks potentially in, in next June's NBA draft. It's, you know, the, the, there's been a lot of NBA talent come through the Big Ten over the years, but a lot of, uh, the recruiting rankings, you, the, the top players typically are going to the SEC, ACC, Big 12, other programs. The Big Ten's kind of, been behind in recent years and getting these top flight kids so it's it's different to to have those type of players coming into the big 10 how did this all come about for Rutgers obviously we know the the connection with Dylan Harper and his brother playing previously at Rutgers but to get two guys of this caliber how did you know how did this come about for Rutgers to to be able to land these two kids we're still kind of piecing it together ourselves right it is it's kind of crazy to think about and even months after the fact it's Nuts to see this collection of talent at Rutgers at a place where, you know, for 50 years since they went to the Final Four last time, there just hasn't been anywhere near a kid as talented as either one of them now to have two. Uh, Dylan Harper, you mentioned Rutgers had the leg up, knowing his family really well, having coached his older brother and developing him from kind of a low-ranked recruit into one of the best players in the Big Ten, their best player and arguably of the 21st century outside of Quincy Doobie. So uh, that was always an advantage, and Dylan went to countless games Growing up, he was a fan of Rutgers, obviously, and he likes the coaching staff. He feels comfortable with them. Uh, but what helped get him on board was getting Ace Bailey on board. That's a little uh, different, obviously, and a little bit of a bigger hit. Ace Bailey was you know, neck and neck with Cooper Flagg, and some people argued he was the best player in this class. So to get him is obviously huge. He has a connection. Brandon Knight, I should say, the assistant coach, who's huge in getting these two guys. He's a massively good recruiter, which is why he gets paid the big bucks. Uh, he has a connection to... Ace Bailey's agent, Omar Cooper. And that is a lot of where this, you know, the connection comes from. And he got on him and his, uh, his now teammate, Jermichael Davis, early. Those guys are two best friends. They brought Jermichael Davis into the 2023 class. Uh, and that helped him feel even more comfortable. But I think that connection, that long time connection, kind of really helped there. Uh, and then the details of which will, you know, eventually iron out. But that, that's like the genesis, really. And then once you get him, you get him to commit in kind of a spectacular way after they went an overtime game at home at the rack against Ohio State in a wild environment. Uh, he gets swept up in the emotion, commits to Rutgers. And the day, you know, a couple of days before, he's on the phone with Dylan Harper saying that he's got to join him at Rutgers. And Dylan Harper is saying, if you commit, I commit. And Dylan Harper ended up committing December last year. I think it was kind of a, you know, unspoken agreement months beforehand that this was all going to come together. And now, now it is. And I think it's been just the ramp up to the season is going to be just fascinating because I think you're right. This is to me, the most intriguing team in the Big Ten. I think this will be the most successful season at Rutgers in a long, long time, because if it isn't, it'll be a huge disappointment. This is essentially a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Rutgers, I would bet a large sum of money, will never, ever have two lottery picks on its roster in the same season again. So you got to take advantage of it. 